Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. My Remarkable 2 has finally received the update 2.7, which brings some mild updates and new functionalities, but some of them are quite welcome. And I think as an overall package, it's an interesting one. So let's check it out and see how it works and what new stuff did we get. All right, and here is the update 2.7 finally on my Remarkable 2. So it's not a major update, definitely uh, nothing huge or groundbreaking, but there are definitely some um, quite useful uh, 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 additions and improvements to the existing functionalities. So let's check them out. One of the main things that has finally, finally, finally come to the platform is that the page overview has been moved from uh, where it was buried deep inside the menu in the sub menu and everything instead now we finally have an icon that is pushed into the uh, uh, the foreground so you can just simply normally tap on the page overview and you'll already have a page overview table of contents and everything um, so yeah normal functionality something that has been waited for <laughs> uh, too long to be honest but it's good that it's finally here so definitely a streamlined uh, improvement as far as the reader experience side of things goes and it's not just for the reader, it is also for the notebooks themselves. So you can also have the page overview of your notebooks in the same manner. Another very welcome, minor, but very welcome thing is that we got a new gesture, which is swipe to right. So from the side to the right. And this one functions only when you are within the file explorer or within the folder structure, if it is. So this is basically a back gesture so that you back out to the parent folder so you can see that we are just going jumping up to the parent folder up to the parent parent folder all the way up to my files which is the root of the folder structure so this is definitely helpful because uh, prior to this kind of implementation you needed to kind of tap on this here to go back so it's very nice to actually go back but uh, also keep in mind that the same functionality is still here that if you want to jump more uh, at the same time that you don't want to go one by one by one but if you just want to go back to documents you can still just tap it up there and then it works i think it just kind of combines and gels the experience nicer together and it's a welcome addition. Another small addition that has been added is that if you are in a list view, then uh, the list view has been updated a little bit. So yes, now it actually shows the author and if the document contains also the publication date, publisher, number of pages that's here. And also they say like last time that it was accessed, that it should be displayed, but I don't see that. So that's something that definitely they say that uh, should be there, but it's not, I don't see it. I don't see the date when it was last accessed. So the, the release uh, 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 notes say that, but in reality, that's not something that I can see here. And for sure, this I accessed <laughs> very, very recently. Um, but yeah, at least we have the page count and the author and some other information um, there. So far, I haven't found a document that contained all of the things like publication and a publisher and all of that kind of stuff. So given the fact that the last time accessed doesn't seem to show, um, I'm not sure if it works or not. It is listed that it should work, but you know, if this one doesn't work, then it could be that the other ones don't either. Um, one more thing that I just wanted to say is that uh, it's a good idea to mention this. While uh, the list view and the grid view is definitely a good thing to have, one thing that I really don't understand still is why is it not here? Where you have sort by, alphabetical and everything else. I mean, it just makes absolutely perfect sense that this icon is over here next to it. Or yeah, I mean, that's just how it works pretty much everywhere. There's zero reason to have sort by option here. And um, but for the grid or list view that you have to go into my files and go there. So hopefully they'll change that as well, like they've changed with the page overview, and they'll just move this icon over here so that you can just 
kind of use it here normally for your folder overview and um, yeah just the sorting another new thing that has been added in update 2.7 is you can see actually this this is a new icon on the remarkable and it is support for uh, password protected pdf files password protected file definitely imports correctly they will be shown with a little key lock on it and when you try to open them you will need to enter a password now this one is password protected by a completely impenetrable emily gillimore panic room style of password which is one 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 so got that one 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 so that actually works fine and then everything is normal furthermore when you are in your desktop app and you want to export the pdf that is password protected you will also get an option that asks you do you want to keep the password protection or do you want to remove it i don't think that we have an option to change the password that's not something that i've found but yeah that's pretty much uh, what we have so far and and when you go to PDF settings, we do not have the option to change the front cover because it is a protected uh, document. So it will only give you the option of having this locked uh, type of a cover, which is a good thing. Another improvement is that the highlighter is now smarter. So what does that mean? Let me just zoom in a little bit so that you can see a bit better because this is a very, very small document there we go i'm just gonna tilt it here so i can write more uh, clearly so the highlighter tool has been changed and updated and that means that now if i uh, carefully highlight here it will recognize the borders of the letters and it will shape itself and conform itself into a nice and tidy looking highlighter something that you would expect now um, you can see that this time he didn't manage to recognize it. So it really depends how precise you are. So if it's too squiggly, then it's just going to go, okay, didn't really recognize that. It will still highlight, but it will not have that function of conforming to the text. However, if you are careful and you don't squiggle too much, then it will be able to recognize all the stuff and you will be able to kind of do this so what makes it determine is it going to conform or not well from what i can see is that if your highlighter is touching the letters of the lower row or the higher row then it doesn't do it so if i do just like this and i don't touch any of the other characters above it or below it then it works fine however let's say here when we have dd so if i did this and touched on the dds it should ignore it and it does so let's try and do the same thing on this one here and just do without touching the dds there we go and now it actually uh, recognizes it. So that's your kind of guideline on how to do this. The only thing that I think should be improved is that we don't have the size uh, option and not all documents are the same. So some documents will have very large font. Some documents are going to have very tiny font and having a fixed size on the highlighter that behaves this way is a bit of a limiting thing because, you know, it's not a one size fits all in some documents. It might uh, the default size may actually kind of touch more rows and then you won't have this option or uh, yeah, in other ones, it won't be enough. So it will be a good idea to just add a size to the highlighter just so that we have the option to conform to the uh, documents and books of different sizes. The highlighter works exactly the same on EPUBs as well. So it's the same thing here. I can just go like this and well this time it didn't touch on anything but it didn't encompass whole characters so maybe that's what actually confused it so let's um, let's just erase this and see if I can put my previous statement to rest as in that it was wrong yeah I have no idea how it actually determines if if it's going to encompass it or not, maybe it's the percentage of characters that are encompassed by a highlighter or not. But uh, bottom line is that it works on EPUBs as well. 
and for most of use cases i think that it should work mostly okay so it recognized these this one here where i was not uh, covering the bottoms it did not recognize it so i can just now delete this and add another one and see how and now it actually works okay so it's a little bit sensitive maybe it could be tweaked to be a tiny little bit more forgiving um, and definitely that brush size for the highlighter i think it would be a good idea to have and the highlighted documents actually export and work in the uh, desktop app normally as well this is the uh, highlighted document and you can see how the highlights are ex um, yeah, transferred onto the um, desktop app here is the protected password file so again you would have to use the password here open it up and here are the highlights that we have and the thing that I talked about that you can actually export so if I choose this one and I say export as a PDF and then I go blah, 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 whatever and then just save it will tell me hey do you want to keep to keep password protection or if you want to be able to export it you need to enter the existing password so that you can export the protected document and once they are uh, exported so even the highlighted and marked epub when it's exported as a pdf let's go here you can see that the new highlighter works as you would expect it to and the same thing applies to the um, yeah password protect and there we go let's go actually it's on the first page i believe yeah there it is so these are the highlighters that were uh, recognized and i think it works really good just those two uh, things that i mentioned that it could be a little bit more forgiving and that we would have if we could have a um, brush size for the highlighter to accommodate for different formats of different documents and epubs and the final addition to the update 2.7 is that finally the keyboard layout has more languages. It doesn't have a ton of new languages, but it does have quite a lot of uh, European languages at least added. So this is the list of the new ones that have been added. And incidentally, this is also a place where I would like to address something that I've read on the Facebook uh, page, where one of the people, or not just one, it's several people said like, oh, one of the things why I didn't want to remarkable is because the handwriting recognition is only in English. Well, no. It's just not true because these are all the languages and sub options of or subtypes of languages that you have currently for the handwriting conversion. So let's say I have Norwegian for Norway set up here. And if I go into here, these are, for example, the top row are uh, yeah, words and characters that are in Norwegian. And if I go into convert to text and export, it recognizes them correctly. Now, these all, all it did not recognize because these are German characters so if i wanted that then i would go back into settings and under the language i would choose this time uh, german there we go let's german germany and then go back into my quick sheets and now do a conversion one more time and you can see that the umlauts are recognized correctly so we have U -O -A, and that is there however the norwegian characters now are not recognized so that's normal and that's just something that i wanted to quickly cover for anyone who might not be uh, uh, acquainted with that now the keyboard thing because that's the main thing how it works well we have this region uh, icon now so once you tap on it you don't have to go into the settings you can actually change your uh, keyboard settings to this and once you actually change it let's say Norwegian I have extra characters here let's try German yeah, German one actually has it and that works. So that's good. But for me, the most important thing is the long press because it is the easiest one of them all. So you long press and then you get all of the variations for all of the languages that are available on the platform, on the keyboard, and they are just there. And then you can see also for the O's, O's, and yeah, all of the characters that you would have. So a long press is definitely there and that's a good thing. And this is something that's been added from before. If you notice the shift icon here for capitals, if you long press and then release, if you have this underline underneath the arrow, that means that we are now in caps lock mode so that we have cap lock, caps lock as 
uh, you would actually need it. So this is just one character without the line. If you press and hold, it will have an underline and then it is locked and basically caps locked. So this is not definitely not new since uh, 2.7. It's just something that has been added since my original review where it wasn't present. And I just wanted to kind of address it in this video because I was talking about the long presses. Update 2.7 for the Remarkable. Um, I think it's okay. It's nothing groundbreaking or <laughs> remarkable, but uh, I think that as a package, it brings uh, several, quite a bit of things that are welcome. Finally, we are getting to be on track. Um, the updates seem to be more regular and the updates seem to be continually moving the platform in a good direction. So that's a nice thing to see. However, it would be nicer to see some more uh, kind of uh, uh, important updates added, such as bookmarking of notebooks, bookmarking of documents and things like that. And now I'm even more hopeful that maybe these things will be addressed. Here's hoping. But so far, update 2.7, definitely useful and a nice thing to have. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the MDO, My Daily Organizer, that I made and released about a month ago. Um, you can find the link in the description below. It is, if you're wondering what is MDO or My Daily Organizer, well, it is a daily, monthly, weekly, quarterly, yearly planner, organizer type of an interactive document for remarkable books and super note devices. It works on other ones, but on these three, it is supported and it's meant for those three platforms that will help you organize and uh, yeah basically reschedule and tighten up your time management and life management skills uh, via that use of that interactive hyperlinked document. A lot of users are really finding it useful. I am finding it very, very useful and I'm using it daily. So I'm super happy that so many of you are enjoying it and using it. And yeah, if you haven't checked it out, check out the whole playlist because there's important videos there. So be sure to check that out before you decide whether or not that product is for you or not. That's it for me. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.